Welcome to Inside Sound United. Today, we'll be talking about our Heos ecosystem of wireless products. Sound United is proud to have one of the most robust wireless multi-room, multi-zone ecosystems. Chances are, many of you have already installed these products or have these products in your home today. Here with me today is Phil Jones to talk a little bit more about the products. I'm now gonna hand it over to Phil. Hello, and welcome to our session on wireless distribution of high-res music. My name is Phil Jones from the Cyanided Brand Activation Team, and we're gonna be talking about ways you can get the best sound distributed throughout any home and also enjoy it in high-res. Back in the days, if you wanted to distribute music from room to room to room, it could be very expensive and very complex. And if you wanted to use streaming services, the quality was not very good. Now you do not have to sacrifice performance for convenience. The heart of our wireless music distribution system is Heos. And we have a wide variety of products and solutions that are found in our Sound United family. These include Denon and Marantz AVRs, network players, um, wireless speakers, sound bars, and even custom integration focused devices. The benefit to you as an installer or a consumer is we can offer you a great multi-zone, high-res, high-quality audio experience regardless of the room or the environment that you decide to place that speaker or that sound system in. During this session, we're gonna talk about the different devices that we make, new updates that have happened to our um, Heos operating system, as well as provide you with tips on how to maximize the sound quality of your streaming services, optimize your wireless router, as well as ways that you can incorporate Heos into real world applications. Okay, so let's first talk about the devices. So Heos utilizes many of the most popular streaming services, including Tidal, Spotify, Amazon Prime, Deezer, and the list goes on and on. The benefit is you or your client can pretty much find any song they're looking for on one of these services. And the quality can be CD quality or above. So you can have millions of songs instantly accessible quickly and easily from any zone in your home. How many zones can you have? You can have up to 32 different zones playing back. So as you can see, Heos is a very powerful tool. In fact, in this facility, we actually set up a Heos system and we have 77 pendulum speakers, 22 subwoofers playing back through about 16 zones throughout this building. And I can control every single zone from my phone. So if we can control multiple zones in a 100,000 square foot engineering facility or sales and marketing facility, we can easily provide you with a great experience in a customer's home. While Heos is built into all of our Denon and Marantz AVRs, as well as a variety of different sound bars from companies such as Definitive Technology, we wanna first start with one of our newest additions, which is our Denon Home wireless speakers. We actually have three wireless speakers available the Denon Home 150, 250, and 350. And we also have a new Denon Home soundbar called the Denon Home 550. So let's talk about what makes these new wireless speakers great. The first thing, great quality sound, designed by Denon and approved by the sound master. So you know you're gonna get that great Denon sound. A couple of things that I like about these Denon Home wireless speakers. The first thing, as an installer, built-in power supplies. We've all had the little wall wart that hangs on the wall that you're trying to, that's almost as big as the speaker that you're using. Now the power supplies are built in, makes it a lot easier to set them up. So how do you control these speakers? They have a capacitive buttons with a proximity sensor. So you just wave your hand over the dead and home speaker and the buttons will appear. And you can use those buttons to turn the volume up, pause the music, advance to the next song. There's even quick select buttons. Depending on the model, you can have up to six where you can put in your favorite playlist from your favorite streaming services. In my house, for example, if my wife wants to listen to Spotify all, and she has a favorite channel and all she does is press the one button and the speakers will play. Very simple. 
A lot of times these systems seem very complex, and these quick select buttons make it easy for the entire family to quickly play their favorite playlists from their favorite streaming services. And so as I mentioned, with Heos, you can have up to 32 zones. So let's quickly talk about how you group rooms together. So for example, in this building, I have multiple rooms and multiple zones. The cafe, the, the lobby, the overflow room, and maybe even outdoors. If I want to, I can pick a song from a popular music service, say it's title, and I can group the cafe, our overflow room that has all our video games and game systems in it, as well as our outdoor and our lobby. So all of those are playing that same um, song from title. Or I can go upstairs to the sales and marketing department and they can group sales and marketing together and they could be listening to rock and roll from Spotify. Very simple and can be done from a smartphone or from a control system. Because not only this can you utilize your smartphone or mobile device to control Heos, Heos is also compatible with many of the most popular control systems, including Control 4, URC, or Josh AI. So you can easily incorporate Heos into those control systems so the customer only has one control that he can utilize to control not only his home theater, but all of his multi-zone entertainment. So how do you group multiple zones together? First, you pick a, a starter zone. Say it is the lobby. You pick your song from your popular streaming service or playlist or album. Once the song is playing, you grab the other zones you would like to group and drag it down to the desired zone. As simple as that. And now all of those zones are playing in sync. Speaking of in sync, we go out of our way to make sure that all of the zones are perfectly synced together. So as you walk from room to room or from zone to zone, you do not get an echo. This synchronization works so well that you can actually take two different den and home speakers, maybe two 150s, and you can group them into a stereo pair. So one can be the left speaker and one can be the right speaker. And what you end up with is perfectly synced stereo sound, as if you actually have a full stereo system in a customer's home. The benefit is many people want stereo sound, but they don't want to deal with the hassle of having all the black boxes that you need to set up a hi-fi system. And with this, you can put one speaker to the left of the fireplace and one speaker to the right of the fireplace, group them together, and you have great stereo in your living room. One thing we want to stress to people that we believe is important when it comes to multi-zone entertainment is a lot of times somebody wants to get one speaker and play that one speaker really loud to fill a large space. That does not sound very good. We've all been to the old rock and roll bar with the big PA system in the front of the room that's blasting out the people in the front of the, of the arena and everybody in the back of the room can't hear it. The best way to utilize multi-zone is to use multiple speakers throughout the space so you can play music at a lower volume and everybody gets great sound without it being too loud in certain locations in the space. So if I can give you one tip, it would be that multiple smaller den and home speakers are gonna be a better solution for many customers than one big den and home speaker. The nice thing about Heos is you can pair not only den and home speakers, but you can also pair it with something like a Denon or Marantz receiver. So you can have the receiver playing back in the theater room or in your entertainment space, maybe put another speaker in the kitchen and another speaker in the living room. So that way, when you're playing back music, it sounds even and it's not too loud throughout your home. Many people who buy multiple wireless speakers may put them in different places, such as maybe in a corner or out in the open. But where you place a speaker has a big impact on its sound quality. For example, if I put a speaker in the corner, the corners reinforce the bass. So you may end up with too much bass. But if I put it out in the open, it may not have enough bass. So we have a great feature built into our Den and Home speakers through the Heos app called Speaker Placement. When you go into the Speaker Placement setting, you can go in and adjust for where that speaker is located, whether it's up against one wall, out in the open, or placed in a corner and it will equalize the bass to give you great bass response regardless of where that speaker has been placed. You also have the ability, as I mentioned, to um, make two matching den and home speakers into a stereo pair, which means two 150s, two 250s, or two 350s. And this can be done inside the menu as well. 
So setting up stereo pairing is really easy. First, select the desired Din and Home speaker. Then drag the second speaker to it to group the two together. Then go to Edit Rooms, and other Edit Rooms, go to Edit Group. Once you're in Edit Group, select Stereo Pair. From there, you can do things such as even adjust the balance, as well as the bass and treble, to get them to sound great in your particular space. Another cool feature that Heels offers, if you have a Denon or Marantz AVR, it's called TV Sound Grouping, where you can group your AVR with other Heels devices in your home. So for example, say you're watching the Super Bowl. You can have the Super Bowl playing back in your theater room in full surround sound. Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, Oro 3D, it does not matter. The receiver will then make a stereo down mix that can be sent to all of the Heels zones. So you can have the show playing back in the kitchen or even the living room. There's multiple ways to control a Heels system. Of course, first you can use the mobile app. Heels is also compatible with many of the most popular control systems, including URC, Control 4, and even Josh AI. You can also control Heels using Rune because Heels devices are Rune tested. Lastly, Heels is voice controllable using popular sources such as Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or even Apple Siri. Since we're talking about voice control, let's now talk about our new U26 update because it adds some additional voice functionality to our Denon Home products. Many of the U26 features are focused around our Denon Home products, which include our Denon Home speakers, the Denon Home 150, 250, and 350, as well as our Denon Home 550 soundbar. So let's talk a little bit about this new U26 update. The first thing you're gonna notice about U26 is the Heos app has been reskinned. It now has a newer, lighter, more modern feel. When we first introduced the Denon Home lineup of products, we mentioned that there was microphones built in, but those microphones were not active. With U26, those microphones can now be utilized for Amazon Alexa. So you can use Amazon Alexa to control not only the Denon Home speakers, but other EOS enabled speakers in your home, as well as any other Amazon Alexa controllable devices, such as lights, door locks, and even a thermostat. For privacy's sake, the Amazon Alexa is not automatically switched on. When a customer opens up their app for the first time after the update has been pushed, they will get the option of activating Amazon Alexa, and they can choose to do so or not. If they choose to do so, the microphones would then become active and you will put in your Amazon account information and it will work like any other Amazon Alexa microphone equipped device. If you decide to activate the Amazon Alexa functionality on a Denon home, it is very easy. It's very similar to if you were gonna set up any Amazon Alexa enabled device. It's gonna ask you which Denon home devices you would like to include and turn on this functionality, as well as your location. And finally, you will input your Amazon account information. Once you do that, you are good to go. If you ever decide that you want privacy and you do not want Amazon listening, there's actually a microphone mute button on the top of the sound bar, as well as on the Denon Home wireless speakers. And now you have the ability to add a pair of Denon Home speakers to utilize as your rear surrounds. By adding a pair of wireless rears as well as a wireless subwoofer, you can continue to improve your movie watching experience. Setting up the Denon Home speakers as wireless rears is very simple. First, you select the Denon Home 550 in the Heos app. Then drag the two speakers into a group. The app will ask you, do you want to group them as zones or do you want to make those two speakers into the rear surrounds? Once you group those two Denon Home speakers with the sound bar, the app will ask you if you want to use them as zones like kitchen, bedroom, den, or do you want to use them as wireless rears in your surround system? Once you select that you want to use them as surround speakers, you're done. It's just that easy. So, because of U26, the microphones that are in Denon Home products can now be activated. 
So for example, behind me, I have a Denon Home 550 soundbar. Alexa, play Bob Dylan. This is Bob Dylan from Spotify. Alexa, stop. So as you can see, the microphones work perfectly. There's two ways that people utilize Heo systems. One would be passive, where you're using it as maybe for background music while you're cooking and entertaining. Where music is important, but it's not the main focus. Another way is active, where you're totally focused on what you're listening to. And that's where sound quality becomes critical. In our building, in fact, we are using Heos as the main source in our hi-fi room for both of our hi-fi systems. And we're talking a Class A Bowers 801D4 system, and the quality is excellent. Now let's talk about how to maximize the network in your home for wireless music distribution. One of the things that makes Heos great is we utilize your existing home network. Some wireless music systems use a, their own dedicated mesh network. And what you end up with is conflicts between your wireless mesh network and your home network, which could impact performance. With our system, if you need more coverage, you just expand your home network. You also have the ability to place your HEO system on either your 2.4 gig or your five gig frequency range in your home. Why would you want to set it at five gig? Many of the devices in your home utilize 2.4 and many other wireless services that utilize a home network will also live on 2.4. But so does your door camera and your microwave and your kid's baby monitor. There's a lot of traffic down there and all of that traffic can impact the performance of your wireless music distribution system. By being able to take HEOS and locate its wireless up at five gigs, you eliminate all of that interference and all of that traffic, which ensures better performance. A tip from Phil. If you can use a wire to connect all of your multi-zone audio devices, use that. But if you're gonna use wireless, a lot of times people spend a lot of money for good broadband coming into their home, but their wireless network is not up to standard. This can easily be checked. You can take a laptop, plug it in, and run a speed test using the laptop's browser. Then take your mobile device and run a speed check as well. If there's a dramatic difference between what's coming into the house and what is being broadcast, most likely it's time for you to buy a new router. Speaking of new routers, Many cable companies will give you a router, an ISP router for free. There's a reason why that router is for free. It has limited capabilities. So you will always do better if you use a higher end router. This is because the routers that are provided by a cable company are really only designed to provide wireless to a small amount of wireless devices. As you start adding your phones, your kids' iPads, your laptops, and multiple zones of wireless music, eventually you will reach the limits of the capabilities of that inexpensive or free ISP router provided by the cable company. If you want great performance, you need what's called an MU MIMO router, which basically stands for multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. The best way to think of this router is an inexpensive router is a single lane highway where each device is all lined up behind each other and it has to provide information to one device and then it has to, then to another device and another device and another device. It's like a line of traffic. With a multiple user, multiple in, multiple out router, it can send information to multiple wireless devices simultaneously which will dramatically increase your Wi-Fi speed. And this is important as you add multiple devices in your home. So remember, there's a reason why that router that they give you from the cable company is free. Take it and give it back and go out and get a better router. 
One of the benefits too, as we mentioned, of HEOS is if you need more coverage, you can add additional access points or maybe get a mesh router to better distribute your Wi-Fi coverage. So that way you can have a wireless speaker out on the patio as well as one way down in the basement and know that you're going to get great wireless high-res music performance. Lastly, where you place your wireless router or your wireless access points are important. If you place them in the wrong location, your coverage will not be as good. One thing that's nice about the HEOS app is you can go into the information menus and it will show you the signal strength of each of the particular HEOS devices on your network. And you can determine based on that, where is the best place to place your wireless router as well as where or if you need wireless access points. So these are just a few quick tips on how to maximize the performance of your wireless high-res music system. We don't have enough time in this session to go into hyper detail, but we do have a webinar available on our Cyanided YouTube channel, which goes to how to maximize a wireless music system in hyper detail. So you should check that out. We just want you to know that whether you're using HEOS for passive listening or in a high-end hi-fi system, you can expect the highest performance available in the industry today. So as you can see, I'm really excited about our HEOS equipped products. We have tons and tons of solutions. So regardless of your job or application, we have you covered. Sound bars, wireless speakers, AVRs, even multi-channel amplifiers. We have um, the, your, the whole solution available for you. Now, we want to take some time to answer some questions because there's a lot, I'm sure there's lots and lots of questions. So I brought in the big brains, Nick Murrells and Mike Magzanian. So Nick, what do you do? Thanks, Phil. I'm the category director for HEOS here at Sound United. Um, I strive every day to make the HEOS experience even better than it is. Um, we're in a very fortunate position here at Sound United that we uh, own the technology stack for HEOS. That means the app, the cloud services, and the software that runs on the products. And this gives us tremendous flexibility to bring the features and, and new services to HEOS that we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a big responsibility. Um, I work closely with the brand directors, um, product people, engineers, and take feedback from everywhere, including uh, dealers and customers. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and where, where competing priorities come up, that's my job, to focus on what the users want the most and then work with the engineers to execute that vision. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why you're starting to see HEOS in a wide range of products. You know, Denon, Marantz, you're seeing it in uh, definitive sound bars like the Studio 3D Mini. That's what this man's job is. But even if we have the great, the best products in the entire world, um, support is just as important because if I, I need to be able to seamlessly integrate it. And if I have a question, I need to know who I could call to help me figure it out. And that's where this guy comes in. Mike, what do you do? I work for Sound United as an AV systems engineer. I help support our dealers and installers for HEOS related questions or installation questions that they may have. So as you can see, there's a lot of knowledge sitting here. I'm going to get to be the one that just kind of looks at these two as they answer your questions. So Josh, question number one. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, clear my throat here. So uh, <laughs> I do have a ton of questions from the audience here. Let's start with uh, what makes HEOS stand out from uh, the other wireless multi-room solutions on the market? That's a good question. Nick, you want to cover that? Um, yeah, HEOS is from a sound company uh, that has like over 100 years legacy in the industry. Um, the, the company is full of people that are passionate about sound. Uh, today we're in over uh, 100 uh, different models that have HEOS built in. Um, as an audio company that is building in a technology into famous brands such as Denon, Marantz and Definitive Technology, of course we focus on the best sound quality. So that means you'll see us uh, supporting up to like 24, 192 kilohertz high resolution where some of our competitors maybe stop at CD or 2448. That's one thing that, that makes us uh, unique. We've got the best uh, onboarding and setup in the business. We've got unique features for power users such as USB uh, directly on all of the devices that have, US, uh, have HEOS built in. And uh, you know, we've really grown a reputation in the industry uh, that allows us to get premier uh, access to technology as it's launched in the industry through big partners like Amazon. So we were the first ones to have uh, Alexa voice control a few years ago. 
Uh, we were launch partners for Spotify Connect back in the day, um, AirPlay 2, and, and the list goes on. So, mm. yeah, w with, with Heos, you're, you're definitely buying into a system that's going to get better and better and keep up with uh, the latest things. Yeah, and, and we'll talk a little bit more when we get and we start talking with tips with Mike about things such as being able to um, put your wireless, the wireless music on your, your band on 2.4 or 5. There's diagnostic tool or ways you can actually check signal strength built into the app. And it's pretty robust. Like I said, in this building, we have 77 um, pendulum speakers, 22 subwoofers, and 16 zones of just the office. For the, for the engineering and, and teams and stuff like that, not counting the theater, the classrooms, and all of the showrooms. So that just kind of shows how robust of a system that Nick and his team has put together. Thanks, guys. Uh, next question that's come in. Uh, do we plan to bring Apple Music uh, to the Heos app? Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, so we support Apple Music today through AirPlay. Uh, almost all of the devices that have Heos built in also support AirPlay too. So uh, you can play um, Apple Music and, in fact, any uh, AirPlay-based music source uh, to Heos. It also allows you to make uh, AirPlay groups. And you probably know that earlier this year, uh, Apple released high-res content for Apple Music. Uh, today, you, you can play that on devices with Heos built in. Uh, as long as the device you play back on is made by Apple, so a, a, an iPhone or a Mac or something like that, as long as you can get that high-res signal into our gear through a DAC, um, then you're good to go and play that high-res as well. So there's different ways that we support Apple Music today. Mm -hmm. Next question, uh, when will multi-channel music be supported with the AV receivers? For example, Amazon is starting to uh, have Atmos Music files. Yeah, this is something that we're looking into as well. Um, we're, we're currently uh, discussing it. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have uh, full control over that technology stack. Um, it's, it's one of the, the priorities that I mentioned is competing, and uh, we're excited to look into it. Definitely, it's the future. Here's a question coming in, uh, several questions actually, so I've consolidated them into one. Um, what's the best way to use uh, Tidal with Heos? Uh, what functionality is supported? Excellent. You want to cover that? Yeah, sure. Title Title is a, one of the built-in services where we support Title uh, uh, Hi-Fi. Hi mm -hmm. um, and Nick, I believe uh, you you wanted to cover um, if we would support MQA in the future. Right. <coughs> yeah. So uh, today, uh, Title it's the the only service that supports uh, uncompressed audio over the internet. So you're talking about the full 1.4 megabit stream. Almost everyone else does lossless compression if they're doing CD quality, so that's one thing that makes them unique. Um, Tidal also supports MQA. Uh, that's a technology that we uh, will be bringing in the future. Don't have a, a, a date to mention today, but it's an example of where um, HEOS doesn't try to play favorites with technologies or, or uh, back one system over another. We like to support everything out there. Uh, one of the mottos is that we support your music however you get it. And uh, MQA is one of those examples. So, um, yeah, can't give you a date, but um, it's definitely on our list. Yeah, I will actually give you guys a tip too. Um, a lot of times, if you look at a um, a service on, and you set up that service, a lot of times they default to a lower quality of music because they're worried about the bandwidth in your house. So make sure that regardless of your service, whether it's um, um, Spotify, Tidal, um, Amazon Music HD, that you go into the application, you can set the level of quality. For the ether internet, make sure that it's set to maximum, so that way you get the maximum performance. Because if you do that, they'll look at the receiver, and the receiver will be playing something, and they'll see that it's, um, it's not CD quality. But if you go into the app and set it to max, you'll get at least CD quality from a lot of these services. Very cool. It's actually a good segue uh, into our next question. Uh, how would you say Heos has evolved over the past few years? That's a big yeah, question. Yeah. Excellent question. So, yeah, uh, fans out there may remember that in 2014 we, we released three speakers, uh, the Heos 3, Heos 5, Heos 7. The products themselves were branded Heos, and we wanted to set the, uh, the technology and the brand apart from everything else that the company had done for li literally a century before that. Um, how has it evolved? Uh, so now it's a technology brand that we, we call it Heos Built-In, actually. And uh, in 2016, it uh, had its first outing into Marantz and Denon. 
branded products with those flagship AVRs that were released in the, in the fall of 2016. And since then, we've just continued to improve the platform. You know, a slew of ad advances um, such as new music services, high res, Bluetooth, uh, voice control, and, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. So The board that's utilized in most of these HEOs, that board is kind of common. So whether you get a Denon Home or you get a, an AVR, it's kind of just the quality of the yeah. board that runs HEOs is the same, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And so, so I think that's kind of neat because one thing that's, that's nice too is we've all, as an installer, like say there's a new feature or a new thing comes in, you have to do a firmware update because it's, new, it's a new, um, I don't know, music service and you would have to firmware update all the AVRs, all of the wire speakers, everything else. So because this is the app, when the app gets updated, the AVR gets updated. So as you add services, um, every, mo pretty much most of the heels enabled devices that are out there um, will get that service pretty much yep. along the way, automatically, which is kind of yep. nice. Yeah, it helps our engineers to be working on a common platform as well. You can imagine the efficiencies that you get from that. Um, uh, regardless of the product, as Phil was saying, mm -hmm. the, the same module is actually built into several products. So, um, yeah, ha having that common platform lets us build a, a really nice, robust, stable experience mm -hmm. for the customer. Mm -hmm. And you're going to know everything's going to work well together because it's all using the same board, yep. which is kind of neat. So there's a, a couple of questions around uh, AirPlay 2, uh, specifically to Heos Link, Heos Amp, SuperDrive, and such. And uh, there's also some related questions as well uh, uh, around uh, uh, Rune to a Heos link. So I think perhaps we, we bundle those questions all together and uh, we, we get a perspective from the audience here on that. Yeah, so I guess he's, it's more about, you guys are more concerned things about, um, can you add additional services to, to existing products? And what about um, the future roadmap for new services for um, the products that are that are legacy and upcoming. Yeah, we're, we're always always looking at opportunities to improve the experience. Um, w with respect to uh, some of the ones that were mentioned, AirPlay 2 and Rune, those are definitely on the roadmap. I, I don't have uh, dates or um, announcements like that to make today, but um, we, we hear you guys. We we know that there is interest in those out there. And um, yeah, we're, we're sorting through those and getting to those as quick as we can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like I said, if you look at Sound United, where you look at a Denon or Marantz or even a Heels product, um, we have gone out of our way to continue to um, add additional capabilities to our receivers and everything else. And this is just another example of we're dedicated to do it. It's just, like I said, engineering resources and things like that. Thanks for that perspective. Um, got a question here. Uh, in regards to uh, it's using a wireless network extender uh, recommended with the HEO system. Michael. I'll take that question. <laughs> <laughs> so using a wireless network extender is never a good solution mm -hmm. uh, because it basically cuts the bandwidth in half at best mm -hmm. as well as introduces additional network latency. Mm -hmm. So um, the better option would be to use uh, a mesh network system if you want to extend out your network mm -hmm. um, because that will basically give you the ability to keep the bit the bandwidth mm -hmm. as well as uh, minimize the latency yeah so we're talking about like a like those like like I have a Google home mesh network and there's the Orbeez and some of those yeah. so so before instead of having one router in the middle of the house you just put those little pocky pucks everywhere and that helps expand the coverage right, right? Now, you can also use access points, but we're talking wired yeah. access points yeah, wi to a router, but that's a little bit more work right. than, than, um, than utilizing um, a mesh system. Correct. Now, since, since we're talking about that, um, the, one of the benefits of HEOS is you can, you can either use the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. What's the benefit of using the 5 gigahertz? I just want to remind people yeah, of so why you want to have your, your Wi-Fi music stuff up there. Right, so 5 gigahertz has a cleaner signal, less interference. Mm -hmm. um, 2.4 can definitely have interference based on other products or, or items or wireless devices in your house, like mm -hmm. baby monitors, mm -hmm. carless phones that you may have. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always best to, if you could, put it on the five yeah. gigahertz band. Now, now does heels, can heels can jump back and forth between those two depending yeah, so, on? So basically the router chooses what band that the heels device connects to, but you can separate the wireless names 
so that you can pick one or the other. Yeah, but if you keep the same wireless name, the system will just pick the one that, that works best on it. If you not, have it not, separate, not always. So the router is always in one location. Mm -hmm. And so if a speaker is on the other side of the house, you might be getting interference from your neighbor's house, mm -hmm. and that router has no clue. Okay. All so, right. so it's always best to uh, even. Uh, use a function in our own Helios app. There you go. I want you to talk yeah. <laughs> about that. So, so somebody has a house, right? Yep. And the router is way over here, and uh, and the the the, the, the Helios device is way over there. Right. And they're worried about coverage, but you can actually go into the app and see that and get the information on that. Correct? Yeah, that's right. So we have a tool um, in the app where you can actually go in, called network n network status. Mm -hmm. Um, statistics, or mm -hmm. actually, we used to be called network statistics. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go into that uh, option and you can actually select on one of the devices and it'll do a Wi Fi scan mm -hmm. and it'll show you all the wireless access points that it detects. Mm -hmm. So, whether it's your neighbor's or your own, mm -hmm. um, you can actually see the signal strength and what channel it's using. Yeah. So, even as a dealer, or say you're, uh, you're doing a, ho a home, a project, and you're worried that um, that speaker is getting towards the threshold of losing um, coverage, you can actually take that speaker to that location and, and check it. And then, that, uh, and then you can have that conversation with the client or your wife <laughs> about adding another either puck to your mesh network or access point or maybe moving the router so you get better coverage, right? That's right. And that can all be done from the app, which is something that's pretty unique um, when you look at how, um, when you talk about some of these wireless music apps that you don't see on other devices. That's right. Awesome. Uh, Actually answered a couple of questions that had come in in regards to what if what do you do if your location is far away from a Wi-Fi router, and uh, uh, some questions that had come in about mesh networking as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, one very popular question that's come in is, uh, is it possible to pair wireless surrounds or a subwoofer with the Den at Home uh, Soundbar 550? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take that question. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, so. Um, since the latest firmware update, you're uh, you're now able to pair surrounds and a subwoofer to the uh, that in home soundbar 550. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the quickest way to tell if you've done the update is if the app is white. <laughs> if the app was black, it has been updated. If the app is white, that functionality that tells you that you have the latest version of the application, and that's one of the features that have been added by right. by Nick's team, right? Yep. Is everyone aware? I hope that uh, you can actually change the, the app from black to white. So you just go into the uh, EOS app settings and you'll see a, a menu item they call the app appearance. You can set it to light, dark, or follow the system setting. Mm -hmm. So most phones out of the box, they go dark at night and they're, they're white during the day. So if you, so if you hit uh, follow system settings, it'll, the EOS app will follow that as well. You're probably familiar that with that from your uh, like your, your mm -hmm. mail mm -hmm. app or, or whatever. Yeah, exactly, your email and stuff like that, nighttime mode. Yep. Which is pretty slick. Um, another popular question: uh, Any chance of getting a sleep timer added to Heos and or Ooh, an alarm? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a that's, <laughs> really good. that's, that's a great, great question. <laughs> yeah. that, that's in our backlog as well. Um, we're looking at doing that one. Yeah. But if you do own a Den and Home product with Alexa built in, that's, that's right. You can add a sleep timer. Ooh, see. Yeah. Ah, see, I didn't. I didn't even think about that. That's one other benefit about having the uh, the Alexa built in. And, and reminders and alarms and, and the whole whole bit. Yeah, yes. lots of functionality in Alexa. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, this is uh, uh, less of a question, but uh, more of a request. It's uh, please add the home speakers as surround speakers to all the traditional Den and Moran AV receivers. Ah, that that's a that's a, something that we've heard before. And, and like I said, I can see a benefit to that, but, it, but whenever you build a receiver, there's always kind of that, you have a certain amount of, of, um, of you have, you're trying to hit a price point. Say it's $1,000 or, or a certain price point. You have to determine where do you spend the money to get the most bang for your buck. And if it becomes something that, that wireless speakers become a huge um, demand or extremely popular, um, maybe the engineering team will, re will, act, will allocate the resources to that. Or, but right now, it's like, would you rather have that or, I don't know, AK HDMI or Bluetooth headphones or, or things like that. So there's always that, that balance. And, um, and, uh, and if it becomes this massive demand for wireless rears, we can, it's, it's, it's possible they can do it. But remember, 
if they do that, every it's going to be added to every single receiver, and everybody will. It's going it, to. It affects what else they can spend for building that piece. So, so if you so if everybody wants it, then we can go talk to Yamada Sound about it. Here's another question that's come in: Can a Heo speaker be assigned uh, to any surround channel, like front height? Ooh. So they want to use Heos for as a surround speaker. Currently, that would require that Heos um, a, a transmitter um, built into the into the AVR and a whole lot of rewiring of the surround sound processor. So currently, that is not um, a feature that is available. Um, Vincent asks. If I set up a 13-speaker home theater system on a Denon 6700, can I play movie audio on those 13 plus two Heo speakers elsewhere? Ah, talk about TV sound grouping. You want to talk a little bit about that? That's a cool feature. Yeah, this is something we added a few years ago. Uh, we affectionately call it Super Bowl mode, or I guess World <laughs> Cup mode, or something like that. Or cricket mode. We we're watching cricket. Yeah, there you well. go. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it lets you play the TV sound all over the house to other devices that have HEOS built in. Mm -hmm. So you would uh, just yeah, play the TV sound and then group the other speakers um, in, in the HEOS app. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that feature is turned on. Um, if, if it's not, you'll get a little reminder uh, telling you to turn the feature on. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, does, does send out uncompressed audio over the network, so you need to have a pretty strong network to support it well. Mm -hmm. We do recommend Ethernet if you want to try this out. Um, but I have seen it work really, really well on wireless mm -hmm. networks as well. If you do experience any dropouts, typically they're very, very uh, minor and you can barely hear them. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's a problem for you, there's a slider where you can just increase the delay a little bit. Gives the system a little bit more chance to buffer up and um, you'll be on your way. Yeah, so you can have be playing something in Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhance, Oral 3D in the main room, and then you can also feed um, uh, other zones um, via Heos, which is really cool. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, here's another question that has come up. Um, will Heos information be compatible in the future? Yeah, not so sure I understand the question. Yeah, <laughs> sure well, you, well, remember because we have the formation app. Oh, yeah. formation. For, and yep. then we have the Heos app. They want to know if it's ever going to be kind of blended together. So yeah, of course we have a really cool, unique opportunity here. Um, we acquired uh, Bowers and Wilkins relatively recently. Um, we, we both have roadmaps that we're uh, feverishly going after to launch fantastic products into the market and, and get them into your hands as quick as we can. Um, that, that's taking most of our attention and effort right now. The long-term plan is to leverage the, the best of both of these systems, and uh, especially where there's redundancies, like you know, uh, if there's a new Wi-Fi standard that comes out, we don't need two engineering teams working on, on mm -hmm. that one thing. Mm -hmm. So those are the sorts of, of, of uh, scales that we'll uh, take advantage of as we go forward. The things that have made the, the brands what they are today, the, the DNA and the differentiation, that's another thing that we'll definitely keep, no matter what uh, hardware is underneath or, or who's working on it. So yeah, really great opportunity before us. Cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else do we have? Um, someone asked, there's quite a few, uh, when will we have the, the, the HEOS app? Or, uh, or, or when will we add this to the HEOS app? But let's, uh, let's start with, when will we add HEOS app to the Mac OS? I'll take that one. Um, mm -hmm. Some listeners might be aware that the latest uh, versions of the Mac OS do support iOS apps. Of course, Heos is, Heos is an iOS app. So we're looking into uh, just doing some testing, ma maybe some minor work to, to get that working. Um, can't give you a, a date of delivery of that, but um, yeah, certainly it's, it's something we've heard for a while that people would like to add a control Heos from a desktop. Mm -hmm. Joe asks, uh, when, when might we see a small footprint uh, Heos enabled amplifier with HDMI arc? <laughs> he's asking, that is, so he's looking for a, um, so, so basically they want to be able to use arc for, I guess, the, I'm trying to figure out why they would use it. They want to get it for uh, volume control. They want to use the amp. They probably want to connect the two channel amp to a TV. To a TV, yeah. and then okay, and okay, okay. That's a product question. <laughs> yep. So, so, um, and like I said, that we, how would you? Yeah, we, we can't just, we can't make uh, announcements about future products. <laughs> uh, it's, I can't uh, tell you. 
<laughs> but very cool use case, and um, yeah, it's, been, it's under study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Daryl asked a question about uh, importing uh, personal playlists uh, from Amazon Music into the Heos app. Wow. So why do personal playlists, uh, actually do personal playlists from Amazon Music, uh, can they be imported into the Heos app? Uh, today, you, uh, that's not possible, but there, there are other means of um, playing your personal collection, such as AirPlay, if, if you'd like to do that with Amazon Music. And we're always looking at uh, revising and updating and, and improving our services, so that may be one that we'll work on soon as well. Thanks. Lots of questions. Here's one. Uh, do products with uh, Heos built-in support WPA3? Yeah, we, uh, the current modules are not WPA3 native, but um, of course they work with all new routers. Um, the, all the routers are backwards compatible. So the, the security is really good on WPA2, and, and we do support that, and we'll work with all the new routers. So nothing to worry about. Actually, let's talk about routers real quick, because there's some settings in routers that could impact the responsiveness yeah, of, sure. of, a, um, of, of a HEO system. Um, what are some uh, settings in a router that could, that could impact? I know there's a couple of them if yeah, you set so, them incorrectly. So, so some settings like UPnP, mm -hmm. um, especially on some Luxel routers, mm -hmm. are disabled by default. So mm -hmm. it's always best to have UPnP enabled for control reasons. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I, I heard sometimes if you don't have it enabled, when you, when you hit volume up, it takes a, like, a, like, a, like a second or so before the volume goes up. Is that one of the things that happens? That's right. Okay, so that's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Tip from Mike. Let's see here. Uh, Joe asks us today, is it possible to use a Denon RCD N11 CEOL or Marantz CR612 to power rear speakers instead of a Heos amp? That, that's a whole lot of numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RCD um, N11. RCD N11. Yeah. Or Marantz CR612. Oh, pretty pretty so, sure we don't. It's got to yeah. be uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Heos amp, for example, mm -hmm. to, to do uh, surrounds. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, getting a couple of questions about adding certain voice services in addition to Alexa. So we did get a question about uh, Siri, and we did get a question about uh, Google Voice as well. Any more info on that question? Yeah, I mean, we support. We already we su support yeah. Google, and we already support Siri. So. Yeah, depending on the voice service, there are there is different levels of functionality, mm -hmm. correct? But all three of the ones that were mentioned are supported. Um, as well as Josh. A bit more about, as um, well as Josh AI, mm -hmm. which is the custom integration one. Yep. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, our support for those those other voice services. I think there's there's some people that are asking about what our compatibility is with them. Yeah, for the uh, Google Action, it's, it's power and volume and, and next track type of functionality. Mm -hmm. um, Siri has the uh, same functionality. And uh, Josh AI, as, uh, as Phil mentioned, it's a custom integrated grade uh, voice control system. And, and that's pretty much full HEOS functionality. Anything that you would find in a third party controller um, can be available in Josh AI as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see. We've got a couple more questions. Uh, one question was um, can we talk to how uh, the home speaker mics uh, are integrated and support uh, Google? Do they support Google as well as they do Alexa? Yes, uh, with Alexa, you would download the Heos Home Entertainment skill, and then you have uh, full functionality to start music, uh, pause, resume, next track, and we support uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, who else? Uh, can't remember the others. F a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Enough that if you ask for a song, it'll yeah. actually play. Um, but what about, um, th like he was asking about maybe Google Assistant, that th is that, is that going to be available and when that's going to be available? That, that's something else that we're having conversations about, mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're definitely on the roadmap of the, the big tech companies and um, we're talking to them all the time and yeah, we'll yeah. see, we, we might have something cooking there. Yeah. So you can see Nick has a whiteboard with a whole lot of to-dos on, yeah. on, <laughs> on it and, and it's just trying to work your way down that list. To, uh, to give you the features that are, are most requested. There's also a lot of questions on um, 
product roadmap, uh, new products, uh, that's a question uh, that I can take as well. Uh, you know, we're always working and uh, soliciting input, and this is one of the ways that we do it, is uh, to solicit input from our customers and our dealers on uh, best ways to take the product forward. Uh, we do take this into account our development, as Nick mentioned. Uh, we should have more to share uh, around uh, CDA 2022. So we mm -hmm. hope you'll come uh, tune in and come visit us then and there. Before we go, um, we only had about an hour to talk about uh, HEOS, but there's a lot of diff a lot of other things we could cover. Um, to, we have lots and lots of extensive webinars that have been conducted about things such as HEOS, setting up um, wireless high-res um, distribution systems, um, surround sound formats, new AVRs, new products, um, and all of those other things. So we encourage you to like and subscribe to our Sci United um, training YouTube channel. So go to YouTube and su subscribe to our Sci United um, training channel, and that's where we try to provide you with as much information as you could possibly want or need in order to properly integrate and optimize Sound United products. Thank you, Nick. And thank you, Mike. Thanks, and thank you guys for coming today. And hopefully you've learned a little bit more about our exciting HEOS-enabled products. So take care, and we will talk to you soon.